Hey guys, it's Jim Nix from Nomadic Pursuits and I'm back with another video. And today we're gonna to put a new sky on this photo from New Mexico. Uh, I've been playing with Aurora HDR Pro quite a bit, as you can see from other videos. And I love it, it's amazing. I'm having so much fun with it. Uh, and I've been using textures and experimenting. And in fact, I did a video about textures a while back. Uh, but I started thinking about, uh, couldn't I just, instead of putting a texture in the photo, couldn't I just put something else instead of applying a texture uh, across the photo or painting the texture into just parts of the photo, <clears throat> couldn't I just put a new sky in the photo? And guess what? You can, right? So that's what I'm going to do today. So I have this photo from New Mexico. Uh, as you can see, the sky is pretty blown out. This is a single exposure. I've already brought it into Aurora and I applied a filter, or excuse me, a preset. And the preset that I chose is in this realistic category. It's called Vivid Memories. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it kind of gives a nice little pop. Uh, but as you can tell, this guy's a mess, right? It's blown out. So uh, we're going to replace it. So let me show you what I do there. Uh, it's the same as adding a texture. In fact, it's the exact same step. So you just go up here to the Layers panel, hit Plus, and I'm going to call this a New Sky. Boom. Okay, and then you get your source file. So you come over here, go to your source image, and click on Custom Texture. Now, I know it's not a texture, but that's what we're going to call it. So. Uh, now that I've uh, figured out I can do this, I've been uh, collecting all these uh, sky and sunset uh, and cloud photos uh, from my library and putting them in this folder on my desktop. But I've got this one, which is a sunset in Austin. I'm going to go ahead and use that sky on this photo. Okay, so there it is. So if you notice, it covers the whole thing. If you look up here, it comes in at 100% opacity and it covers the whole layer. Uh, but that's okay. I'm going to drop this down. So now you can see uh, you can see parts of both photos, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to paint the uh, sky from that top layer on top of the bottom layer, right? And so to do that, I need to sort of see where the uh, line is, the ridge line of that mountain in the distance. So uh, once you uh, have changed that opacity, and, and I'm at 38% opacity here, come over here, grab the brush. Okay, that's at 100 already. So I'm going to just uh, with the right bracket key increase the size of my brush. And I'm going to paint, right? So here comes the painting. This only takes a second uh, to get the, you know, to get it started. Uh, and if you notice, it's kind of faded, and that's because remember I'm at 38% opacity. Uh, so we'll change that in a second. Let me check my mask and where it sits. Okay, I'm kind of rough around the ridge line here, and we're going to fix some of that in a minute. But let me take that off. Okay, so there's your sky, but you can't really see it. So I'm going to bump that opacity back up. Okay, back to 100%. The sky is now on top of your image. As you can see, my mask is really messy here around the ridge line. And the truth is that is the key to having a, a sky replacement is getting this mask pretty clean because you want, uh, you know, you don't want it to be obvious. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Uh, now, since I'm recording a video, uh, I'm going to do this a little more quickly than I would do um, if it was just me working on a photo, right? Um, I need to clear some of that out so I can see it. Uh, so in other words, I'll probably take several minutes and go over this a few times. Uh, that's already better. If I look at my mask, all right, I got a big miss up here. So I want to come, oh wait, I'm in the erase. Let me brush. I want to come in here and do a little bit better job. I want to shrink that. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Again, it's not going to be perfect, um, but uh, it's okay. It's going to give you a good idea of what we're doing here. So there's the mask. All right, so that's not bad. I mean, it, it could certainly uh, be a little cleaner uh, right around in here. I see a couple of spots that are sort of driving me nuts. I'm staring at the screen here, craning my neck, trying to get all down in there and fix this dude up. Okay, we're going to call that done. So there's your new sky. Uh, that was, what, two, three minutes, and you've already got a new sky in your photo. Now, again, it'll take longer in real life um, uh, because you want to get the masking correct. So you could do this with any kind of photo, not just landscapes. You could do a cityscape. The thing about a cityscape is there's a lot of tall buildings, right? So you get all these rectangles and shapes. you got to mask around all that. So it's going to take a lot of detailed brushwork. We're not going to do that today, but... Um, we're going to call that a mask, but I'm not done. So if you notice in looking at this photo, the sky and the foreground, uh, they don't really go together very well, obviously, right? Taken under completely different light. Um, the foreground was taken in that light. 
but now I've given it that, uh, that light. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna call this foreground and we're gonna fix that. So I'm gonna take this mask, copy it to the new layer, okay? And I'm gonna say paste mask, but I don't want it to be the same, I want it to be the opposite. So I'm gonna invert. So boom, now I've got a mask that's inverted that'll just cover this bottom here. So what I wanna do is try to get the tones and the color in this lower uh, half of the photo basically to be uh, comparable to what's in the sky. So I'm gonna do that in the color panel. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna warm it up a little bit, give it a little bit more oomph in the warmth and maybe a little bit of tint. That's giving it a little bit of an orange tint, um, you know, may or may not be the right amount. That's where we were, that's where we are. Uh, but it certainly looks to me a bit more natural than it did. And just uh, for starting or for comparison purposes, that's what the photo started as. And here's where we are. And then, again, it's just a few minutes in. So that's something you could do. Now, you could also do other things to the foreground if you wanted to uh, add some detail. I think there's plenty of detail here in, in these dried grasses and this, this stone path uh, or stone road or dirt road, whatever you want to call it. Um, let me take these things out again. So... Original photo, new sky with a, you know, not a perfect mask, but something we could fix later. Um, and then some adjustments there. So there's the foreground beforehand, there's the foreground after. Now that I look at it like that, it's maybe a little too warm. So I might come down a little bit, and maybe it's a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. So I like that. I think it's a bit more of a natural match, and the colors are uh, in better shape. Uh, and from here, really, the sky's the limit. You could say, hey, I'm done. Look what I started with. And, you know, not a bad photo. I like the lines. I like the road. I like the mountains. I actually like the clouds, but they're blown out and, you know, kind of useless to me. I, I like that a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more. It's, it's more interesting. It's more dramatic. Uh, but if you wanted to do more, you could just say, well, I'm going to put another layer in here and say preset. And let's say, you know, go grab a preset. Now, if you notice here in the preset uh, panel when they come up, Everything that you see is the photo that's on top, which technically is the texture, right? So you're showing that as the layer here, but that's okay. Let's say we take this realistic dreamy, and uh, you know, if it came in at 100%, that'd be way too much, and at zero, you know, why put it on there if you have it at zero, right? But maybe I like a little bit. It's kind of fun. Uh, you know, you could just give it a little bit more oomph. So there it is at 44%. I kind of like that. Let's uh, let's full screen that dude so you can see the whole thing. And uh, here we go. So again, it's, it's kind of red here. I think that plays off the orange light uh, and, the, and the red light in the sunset sky um, and the preset uh, before the preset, after the preset. A little moodier, a little dreamier, uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of cool to me and kind of interesting. And then, you know, if you wanted to get noise out of the sky, you could create a layer. You could use the copy the mask from this sky layer and then just crank up the HDR denoise. Uh, if you wanted more color, uh, maybe you want to tone down the color. We could do that on this layer because this presets applied across the whole image. So let's click on color and maybe let's change the temp a little bit. And let's take it down. Not so orange, maybe a little more blue. All right, that's a little, yeah, I don't really like that, but it's something you could do. Maybe you want to warm up the whole thing. Uh, maybe give it a little more tint. You know, it's uh, really the uh, sky's the limit, so to speak. I think I liked it where it was. So I think I'll leave the colors alone. Uh, but that's with the preset. And once again, that's before we had it. We had already made the foreground changes here to get the colors to match better. If you remember, that's the foreground we had. Then we made the color adjustments and then we added a preset. And that's it, folks. Super easy, super quick. The only thing to be aware of is that you gotta pay really close attention on the ridge line uh, in this photo or wherever your horizon line is, wherever your, you know, wherever the separation is between your sky that you bring in and the, uh, and the uh, you know, whatever you started with. Uh, but that's it. Super quick, super easy, super fun. Just another great trick and another fun thing to play with in Aurora HDR Pro. Have a great time out there experimenting with Aurora. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks much.